Good morning, folks. The experts have confirmed our CME analysis from yesterday. We took a big earthquake as the coronal hole faced Earth, and the weather is wild around the world. But we'll begin by getting a quick update over at spaceweathernews.com. Last day on our star was much calmer, but the big story is already on its way to Earth. Solar flaring is dismal as that one sunspot group identified yesterday did decay slightly in the afternoon. Solar wind is calming back down now after failing to produce more than some magnetospheric instability. And of course, the real story is what we saw yesterday. Plasma filament complex fell apart with lifting and releases that look like a wide-angle partial halo when you look at it on Soho Lasco coronagraphs. We said expect impact Sunday night or Monday. NASA's Enlil says late Monday or even Tuesday, and NOAA leans that way as well, but... 99% certain the impact will hit Earth, and I think we should have our eyes open starting tomorrow night just in case. Let's hear six seconds from yesterday's news. Next coronal hole is creeping towards center disk today. We're in a brief quake lull until it gets there. So indeed, the quake watch would have actually started a day earlier if the CME didn't restrict and push back the opening, but it did indeed hit center disk yesterday, and with the solar wind and magnetic flux, a powerful magnitude 7.7 .7 earthquake struck the West Pacific, northern Mariana Islands. There was no tsunami, but there was a mountain on the other side of the world that got anxious. Fuego put on a pretty little show down in Guatemala. Folks, that system we identified near the Philippines is actually now forecast to get a bit worse before running across the South China Sea and right at Hong Kong. Taipei won't see the highest wind speeds, but flash flooding should be considered likely if they catch a spiral arm. Many of you saw this either on YouTube or Facebook last night. Major monsoon activity in the high desert as the wind was blowing hail straight sideways at one point. The entire storm lasted less than six minutes, but the gold came before it actually arrived. War of the Worlds type lightning over and over in one location, which actually isn't as rare as you might think in the span of half a second, but when you can use an iPhone and catch the positive bolt coming up to meet the step leader coming down, well that's a major lightning strike and I'm not sure the positive ground segment has ever been seen with the cell phone before. Anyway folks, tomorrow is the deadline for Jeffrey Love and the USGS to shake off my playful humor and accept the challenge to verify what a research expert, NASA engineer, and statistics professor say is the way the sun triggers earthquakes. Thus far, we've heard nothing, and hopefully we won't have to step it up a notch next month, Charlie McDennis style. Spaceweathernews.com slash challenge if you need a refresher. We've got weather around the world here, followed by shots of our star to close. It's 4.15 a.m. in the new valley of the sun. Eyes open, no fear. Be safe, everyone.